Um, the next speaker is a guest speaker. Um, we're invited to, to um, speak to us. It's Tangaroa Walker. He's Farm for Life. He has a um, online education tool. He's a dairy farmer, and by his Google site, he's also an author. Um, he's going to speak to you, and he's going to um, ask questions, and he's going to uh, want you to ask him questions. So, but so he has slotted time about 40 minutes, so he wants to speak for 25, and he wants to get engaged with a conversation. Um, we offered um, a cohort for him to, to appear, and he said, oh, look, um, buy some bricks for the Southland Charity Hospital. He said, buy a couple of bricks, but the appropriate amount. So we've bought four bricks for the Southland Charity Hospital. So Tangaroa, would you like to come, come up? Hey, hey. I'll just, I'll stand here. I'll stand here. Um, I normally don't use a mic because I normally um, have got my paddock voice on. Um, so kia ora, kia ora everybody. Um, awesome to be here. Um, why is this good for me to be in front of you guys? Uh, because I wasn't one of you. I wasn't one of you in a sense that I struggle to read, struggle to write, don't like analytics, don't like gathering them. Uh, but if you can show me something, um, I'm, I'm all in, and um, and so I think the reason the reason that I'm I'm stoked to be in front of you guys is I think there's a there is a, a gap um, between the people that are in the gumboots uh, out there learning and uh, a lot of our a lot of our knowledge uh, out there, and so um, for the next 25 minutes I'm just going to give you a bit of a bit of a corridor as to why you should scan that uh, QR code up there whether you've got um, Google Play or Apple, um, and how I think that we can work together uh, to deliver our your guys' education in a way that people can better understand it and then hopefully buy into uh, farming for the future. So, um, we're right in the middle of mating, right? Look, I'll just get everybody to stand up. Everyone stand up. You guys look like you're falling asleep. Have, we'll have a stretch up as well, you can, and then... Two hands by your side, right side, going to go down, keep your legs straight as far as you can, and then on the other side. And then I want you to ask the person next to you how many hours sleep they had last night. We had a dinner last night. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay, okay, let's reframe, let's reframe that. Everybody sit down and I'll... Um, I hear you guys had a dinner last night, so you probably had no sleep, yeah? It's not, this, it's not the dinner that causes the no sleep, it's the function afterwards. Um, chuck your hands up if you've had over eight hours, you get over eight hours sleep a night. Cool, good to see females' hands up. Chuck your hands up if you get uh, more than six hours sleep a night. Chuck your hands up and leave them up if you get less than six hours sleep. Chuck them up high. Be proud. Now I'll tell you why you shouldn't be proud. So if you get less than six hours sleep a night, because we're in the middle of mating, right, out on farm, um, you've got the virility of somebody 10 years your senior. So you guys all know what virility means. Um, good, yeah, it only affects males, though, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, your ability to have a bit of stamina in the bedroom is, uh, is hindered by 10 years, unfortunately. So we're right, right being smack in the middle of mating, um, which is why I'm a bit late, so apologies for being late today. I'll just give you a rundown on where, what, I'm, what I'm up to, uh, what occupies my 24 hours. So uh, currently running a 560 cal uh, equity partnership for uh, yeah, 16 shareholders that are all around the, around the world. I'm a contract milker. Got two amazing staff. Uh, one's just moved. He uh, used to be a farrier in Australia. He's moved here, um, and I've got a Scottish guy and his lovely wahine uh, that have moved over, and they rear our calves. And um, he's, we're all on the same level on our farm. We don't really have roles um, in terms of seniority. Um, I believe that if everyone understands the how and why of how we do things, um, it's, it's a shared responsibility and there's real good buy-in. So that's my farm team. Uh, we, I work with uh, Nikki, Jolene, and Ivan from Agribusiness, and I've got a functional fitness gym in town um, that, that, I've, that we started because I was getting fat 
and I've also got a social media um, platform called Farm for Life and have a videography team of about six um, that shoot and edit all of our content and yeah, upload it into our app. Um, so, so over there, it'd be cool if you guys can pull your phones out sometime during the chat and uh, scan the code, just hold your camera on it and um, just tap it and it should, should download it. Um, so when I was young, I, I really struggled at school. I, I struggled at school because I'd been I'd moved around a lot when I was a young fella, uh, and, and I had like m most of my whanau were gangsters. So yeah, we, we I sort of got told that if you wanted to wanted something, that you you go and get it, and I mean physically go and get it, and that was um, that was sort of my upbringing until I got whangaui up to uh, my uncle and auntie who were uh, a bit older than my parents. They were old enough to be my grandparents. Um, but with that came a whole lot of really good values, and I learnt um, that you have to work hard uh, to get ahead. Um, I learnt that you know there's there's a few different values that a few different values in terms of money. There's money, there's honesty, there's trust, there's work ethic, all of those sorts of things, and they sort of set me in a really good pathway uh, when I first got my my first job on farm when I was about 11, and so. Here I am, been working on this farm, this dairy farm down the road, um, getting, getting pretty good get pretty good cash. And I'd been working there every weekend. Uh, every opportunity that I could go to the farm and earn money, uh, I did. I took it. And so I was sort of 14, 14 years old, brought my first car off my, my relief milking money that I'd made over the three years and saved up. Um, and I... Brought this car. It was a Nissan Sephiro. I drove it to school. Set my fifth form exams. I failed terribly with them. I was uh, my, had really bad reports at school. Disruptive in class. Um, couldn't read. Struggled to pay attention. Um, all of all of these things. And and here I was. Got this. Brought this car. Took the gearbox out of it. Uh, put a manual trans transfer on it. Um, turboed it. Um, got drove it to the garage and got a got a warrant and regist registration for it, so it passed. And here I am going to school and can't even get any qualifications. And I was classed as a dummy. I've be, always been a dummy my whole life. I've been at that been been that kid at school. But I but I it was I just when when I I got a growling from my uncle because I um, had I had a really bad report and he said to me that oh you've got another value. And they can't measure it, and I was like, I sort of sat there, and I was like, "Gosh, oh, that's quite that's quite an interesting topic." Um, and so I sort of, yeah, sort of talk, sort of talk to my talk to myself because obviously farming, you're physically busy but mentally quite bored all the time. And so, yeah, for for quite a while, I, I sort of sat and churned on that, and um, went into went went left school, went farming for the guy that I'd been working on this farm for since I was eleven. I was sort of like, I was looking after this farm for, you know, two, three weeks at a time when I was 14, and I was running all the machinery and knew how to do uh, pretty much everything. Didn't know the why behind it, but I knew how to do it. Um, and, and so went and worked for him, uh, went, to a, went to a discussion sort of like this, where we talked about how you can leverage, leverage off opportunities like competitions and, and networking and you know, learning, education. And so I entered into the couple of uh, farming awards, so the Deer Industry Awards, Primary ITO, and the Ahu Whenua Young Māori Farmer of the Year. And I was fortunate to win two of them. I worked hard to, to get there. Um, had some really good mentors along the way. But what that did, what put, it put me in a seat where I could get some awesome opportunities. Went contract milking at a young age. Uh, I think I was 21, 20, 21 when I went contract milking. Moved down here when I was 18 to get away from the, the riff wrap up riff wrap up north, but when I when I was 20 when I was when I won that Ahu Whenua uh, Young Māori Farmer of the Year I, I I spoke and I and I'd been churning for like so ever since my uncle told me that you've got something that is, can't be measured, um, and so I, I sort of I said in my winning speech that there needs to come a time where we use education and tech to deliver knowledge at scale in a way that we can measure it. By like physic with physical hands that can be measured using tech um, at scale, and so I did. I took, did that speech, and so I'd been churning on this thing, this idea about like building a 
building something that can be, you know, take all of your guys' knowledge that's sitting in this room, put it into a platform similar to YouTube, but with a LinkedIn-style database and backing. Um, and so I was like, sweet, how do I do that? And so started thinking about it. I realised that the only way that we could, I could build this thing was to have a big community behind me um, who believed in something that I believed in. And so uh, he'd been contract milking, still doing all like living life and, you know, going to play rugby and pissing up and friends and all of these things that we all do every day and started a gym up and, you know, um, had a lot of downs, ups and downs with life. And, but this thing was just churning. I felt like I had this responsibility um, to try and capture these people that had this value uh, that wasn't measured. And so 2017, I did my first online social media video um, I asked my, my mate, I said to him, oh, what do you reckon, how do you reckon I, I, I'd go doing videos and putting them on social media? And he goes, bro, no one likes you anyway, you can't get any worse. <laughs> and, so, and so we started, I did this video, and it was about bobby calves, and it was about telling people what actually happens on farm, and I did a video about our process and systems, and I think it got about 200,000 views, it went viral, um, 200,000 views in about seven or eight hours, um, then I shared it onto YouTube and same again. And so that was the start. And so I had this responsibility to keep feeding this audience. And so over the last uh, four or five years, we've built this community. I think we've got about 330,000 social media followers now in our community. Uh, they all, I suppose, like what we do uh, as farmers. They think it's uh, engaging. Um, they love our lifestyle that we are able to give our kids and our families and, and the science behind it. I think it, it really it, it blows people's mind uh, how hard it is to grow, grow grass because they're so used to it being a pain in the ass on their lawn every day. If only you could slow it down. And here we are trying to like maximise growth so we can deliver protein all around the world. And so just bringing it to life and showing people what we do, um, there's so much to be passionate about as, as farmers, eh? And it's, it's really cool, uh, but sometimes, you know, at the moment we're hearing a lot about mental health and well-being. It's because we, we don't see that side of things. You know, there's, you, can, you can be positive or you can be negative, and um, if you don't see the outcomes of all your positivity, um, there's a thing in your mind that keeps telling you that you're shit. And that's what a lot of people are saying to themselves because they're isolated. They're isolated. Don't, they don't have that uh, perspective. And so... That comes with everything that started with social media. We we put these milestones out. We wanted to hit 30,000 followers on social media. At that point, we were then going to put some time and effort into building a website where we could create uh, some, some merchandise to sell it all around the world, um, start building our website. We wanted to build a, a YouTube, um, and and so we started that. And we lockdown happened, and we built this blueprint uh, on a blank Excel spreadsheet and we spent six weeks from about nine o'clock, myself and my business partner, John Skull, um, who's a chartered accountant. And so for six weeks, we built this, this video blueprint of Farm for Life, the, the hub. Um, and it, had a, it was blank, and we started off in cell one, A. <laughs> and um, after six weeks, we'd populated six and a half thousand cells. And I think we went right across to G and H um, on, on the Excel spreadsheet. And each, each cell represented a video that needed to be produced uh, with this company, with this person, at this time of the year to serve this, um, these people in this uh, industry. And these were the, the questions that needed to be, to be asked uh, inside our app so that we could then measure the uptake of the education and start building hub creditation. Um, and the, the, big, the big curly one was to tie it in with NZQA qualifications and NCEA so that we could then measure those, those learnings uh, across the board and be transferring those no that knowledge. Um, and so this was the idea. This was 2018, no, 2019. Um, that, that happened, and that six weeks was an absolute mission because I was, was jumping on our Zoom call at about 7, 8 o'clock, um, and we weren't getting off till about 2 in the morning, 2.30 in the morning, and then I had cups on at 4.30, so I was having, yeah, I was about 30 years of my virility, <laughs> the senior, yeah, so, um, but hey, had two kids though, don't know how that happened, <laughs> yeah, so that sort of, um, that was sort of like the, the birth of Farm for Life, and so 
We thought to ourselves, once we hit 150,000 in our community on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, once we hit, uh, hit 150,000, um, we would then put our time and effort into building an app. Um, and that, that there was uh, probably one of the most challenging times I've ever had in my life. One, I don't like tech. I wasn't like a PlayStation or Nintendo freak at school. Didn't like computers. We didn't even have Wi-Fi. Uh, as I said, my parents are now like 75, 76. They've still got a home phone with a six metre cord on it. Um, it's, it's, that, that was my lifestyle being brought up. I think I got my first uh, computer, which had uh, dial-up when I was uh, 17, 18. And that's how I got my first job down here. And so, yeah, fortunately, I'll just tell you a bit of a yarn about this job that I got and the hustle that can go on if you know something but can bullshit. And so there's a lot of bullshitters out there because people are lazy, right? People are lazy. And so I didn't have a very good uh, CV. I didn't actually know what a CV was. And so when I was up north uh, about to come down here, um, I, my boss my boss at the time said to me, you need to go, if you want to be successful, you need to be go get to go where the grass grows the greenest. And so I Googled uh, Southland and um, and this place popped up with three pubs and in and, and this little town and it was Winton. I thought it was in Vicargal at the time because I was in Sunny Bay Plenty. And um, this guy's name popped up, I Ivan Lyons. And so I rung him, um, 17, hey Ivan, um, I'm a young Māori farmer up and young Māori boy up in Tauranga. I want to come down and be successful. Have you got any jobs? And then, and then so yeah, he, he said to send a CV through. And so I sent it through and, and that's how I got a job. I didn't actually know what a CV was. Um, I Googled it and then I copied and pasted and bullshitted my way down here. And so, hey, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You know, it's, it's, it's always funny after the fact. Um, so that's pretty much, you know, I, I think I, I got here from hustle and luck. And, um, and fortunately, you know, I was inspired by some awesome people. But how are the young people getting into our industry these days? They're spending four to seven hours on their phones every day. And that time is not occupied at school. It's, it's tapping into their sleep time. You know, they're getting a day less sleep every single week. Um, that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. When it comes to education and uptake of knowledge, if you are getting seven, eight hours sleep a, a, a night, you can, majority of us can uptake about 40 to 50% of what's being told and learnt in the day. Um, then you, you're supposed to have your sleep time and your brain will replay that 10,000 10, times faster. It'll play, play it over and over. But if you're not paying attention at school, um, you're getting five hours sleep or four hours sleep, your uptake of knowledge is about 30%. And then when you go and get, get into your REM sleep to replay that knowledge over and over again, you're not getting it. So the up, although like we've got tech, right? Technologies in our fingertips. It's easy. It's sort of lifted the level of um, ability to be educated. But if we can't, if we're relying on this for, for to save the knowledge that we're getting, it's putting us in a very, it, it's putting our employers in a, in a bad spot because like a lot of the time we, we're hoping that people understand what, that what needs to be done on farm. And so with the, with the app build, we're sort of tapping into that place that they spend a lot of time. Um, so we've built this app now. Uh, we launched it about, probably about 12, maybe 14 weeks ago. Uh, we launched the app and the app has been built in a way, uh, like all of us here are problem solvers, which is why we're in business and, and do what we do. We're all problem solvers. Our industry, we, we struggle as, a, as farmers in the gumboots every day we rarely ever had to market our product. Like if you're producing food and protein or, or fibre, um, fat and protein, like you really have, rarely ever do you have to market your product. And so there's a huge, huge, if you're not marketing your product, you're obviously not market, marketing the industry that you're in as well. And so our, our lack of uh, intake for young people coming into the industry is, is it's, there's a big challenge there for us. I think we can tell better stories um, we're all awesome people, we're the most trusted businessmen in New Zealand, um, and so we should be good at retaining staff. The second thing was, uh, with the churn, we've got, like, if, if I hire, if 100 people get employed on farm, bugger all of them are staying for year two, and bugger all of them are staying for year three, the ones that do stay. So the huge, huge opportunity loss there with people understanding what they're doing and the culture within our businesses is lacking because we're, we're all missing missing a lab unit like they if we're not if we're lacking staff it's pretty hard to sail a boat when you're down there bailing it out 
right? Um, so then we start going into this, this issue with understanding what we're doing and why we're doing it, and then this, uh, this uh, issue around responsibility. So if people don't understand why they're doing it and how to do it, how do they understand that, how, what their responsibility is for that role or for that cog that they are inside this engine? If you pull one cog out of a gearbox, it can stop the whole thing, even though there might be a million cogs inside a gearbox, right? And so if people don't understand what cog they are and what role they play, uh, it's very hard to keep those people. Um, and then there's this whole thing about fairness and trust. Um, if people don't, if, we, if we're under the pump, if we're stressed out, it's hard for young people to work for you because you're, you're, not, you're not you. You're doing, you're a $100 an hour person doing $20 an hour jobs and it's stressful. And so this, this is, these are the things that uh, we don't sort of take into consideration. Like we can have all the knowledge out there in the world, but if people can't even cope with the stress that they're under, nothing else matters because you're hitting the face with the everyday running of the operation. And so with all of these challenges, um, we've, we've lent on all of them to try and solve them using an app. And so we've built this app. Uh, we're up to about 24... 2,400 videos in production. Um, the app is built in a way that we've got videos that are, we've got a, yeah, our key is to have videos around three to five minutes long. Um, how it works is we we go out, we interview professionals, we do it live while they're doing what they're doing, um, and we capture that knowledge, the education, doesn't matter what the weather is, um, and covering everything from how to start a chainsaw, to active riding on a motorbike, to um, you know setting up your your winter grazing crops, to um, stock stock health, everything. Every our blueprint covers majority of things. We started in Gary um, only because it was a low hanging fruit for us, but we want to move into everything. And so we what we're trying to do is give knowledge in a fun, exciting way. Uh, we're trying to gamify the the the, the app as well. So that when somebody, let's say, here's, a, here's something that actually happened. So I was at the airport, about to head up to a, 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 a keynote, and a guy come up to uh, come up to me and he said, um, hey, mate, I, I don't really like you. And I was like, what was that? <laughs> and um, he goes, oh, uh, my bloody staff, they, um, they watched, watched one of your videos and they bummed me up. And I was like, oh, yeah, what, what, what happened? Tell me about it. Tell me about the experience. And so what had happened is the guy had drafted out some, some cows for some springers, um, and those springers had, a couple of them had carved, and so he put them into the springer mob to go into the colostrum mob, and, uh, and he told the boys to go in and check those cows, process them, and then put them into the colostrums. However, when he got back, um, one of those cows was there and one of them wasn't. There was two of them. And the guy was like, oh, that one, that one didn't carve. And the boss was like, yeah, she did. I bloody, I bloody put her in there. And he was like, no, nah, no, nah, I, I did, um, did what Farm for Life did on the app, did the, did the fanny check and the punch test. And the guy was like, what's that? What's the punch test? So well, I don't know if anyone, any vets in here? <laughs> yep, vet. So you know, the, the, yep, you give it the, put the knuckle on just underneath the, 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 back, the back ribs there and just give it a slight tap. And you can normally feel the calf if it's in there. You'll get a little nab back, um, and and then he checked to see if there were any tears. So he felt the knock, and there were no tears, and so he put her back out. And so, bummed the boss out. Uh, I think he must have laughed in front of him. And so the boss was pissed off. Had to go back in there, but more so that he'd just been, yeah, been told by his, his one of his staff. And so, so that person had watched what our, one of our carving videos, one of many carving videos. Um, which goes through the whole process from springers all the way through to you know gut health and microbes and um, you know transitioning because we're on fodder beat, um, transitioning off and onto fodder beat, and then coming into a, you know springer cow, the importance of that time being a springer cow, um, and then coming into calving and then you know going into the colostrum mob, and so they'd watch those videos. That after every video, there's a quiz that pops up. You answer the quiz, that knowledge gets saved. To, the, to your name, which goes towards your CV, because I never knew how to write CVs. Um, so you get your own online CV underneath the Farm for Life app, um, and that knowledge is, stays with you forever. And there's everything in there, but nothing, like, there is so much more. This is just a blueprint that we wrote 
Um, and I'm sure, imagine if we wrote a blueprint for everything that you guys had. And don't forget this. So to build, to build, to get this app to where it is now, we've had to rely on a, a subscription basis. So we've had people paying to get to where we are, um, and we wanted to get that many people in paying, and build the app so that I could then go go out to organisations like Fonterra, milk suppliers, Dairy NZ, and say, look, we've built this thing. It needs a kick in the guts. Um, do you like it? Um, and can we occupy your guys' content to put, put in there for knowledge and we'll make it free? And so that's where we're, where we're at now. So we've been able to go free. It's free to download um, for anybody because I wanted to break down any barriers around education and learning. People get to watch the content for free. They get their own online CV. They get measured. We're now rolling out um, NZQA qualifications. Um, where's my timekeeper? Yeah. Oh, gee, you are. I can see you there. <laughs> Maybe I'll talk that way. <laughs> Oh, sweet. Yep, so um, we've, we now uh, have delivering NZQA qualifications. Um, we're in, in conversation with Lincoln, uh, trying to get the DIPAG in there. Uh, we are delivering um, the content to suit NCEA at schools. Uh, we've just started, so five weeks ago, I went up to Fielding and we run a pilot program uh, called AgriFutures with Fielding High School and Palmy Boys. And with that program, we had a whole lot of modules that they went through um, and just trialled it out just to have a, have a crack, see what it was like. And then, so that, that was a success, heaps of learnings though. And then last week, I was up at the Canterbury AMP show where we had 32 colleges um, and teams that attended, so four people per team. And the reason behind this is to make superheroes out of farming. And so what I believe is that if we can have this app, gamify it, make it cool, make it exciting, deliver NCEA in a way that's never been done before. It's like a pedagogy um, and so following through with NZQA quals as well. And then so from there, you've got this like, this cool thing that they see on social media. So this is what happens, guys. All right, all right, all right. Young kids these days, they want to be superstars. They all want to be on social media. You know, they want to be seen, they want to be talked about, they want to be tagged and stuff. And so I'll rock up there and then I've, you know, they obviously know me because I've got 300,000 followers, which is value to them. To me, it's just a, it's a responsibility. Um, so they're like, cool, they get to participate in this platform and they can be seen and shared onto social media. So their energy levels go up and their eyes are glued in and they want to learn because they want to be a superhero. They want to be the winners. And so you've got these teams of four. They all participate in like a cross-style event, uh, CrossFit-style event where you've got, say, 15 posts lined up and they watch the video at the end of the at the end of the, sh the field uh, which is on a big projector um, and it's a how-to video of how to I don't know tie a figure eight knot and so in their teams of four they have to, the the hooter goes which is a timer five minutes they've got to tie this figure eight knot they're all in a line you've got four teams of four and there might be 15 of them and they're all from say Auckland. And they and the hooter goes, brr, and these kids run out. They got to put, try and tie this figure eight knot based on the video that they just seen. And then we get um, New Zealand young farmers from Auckland to come in, check it, judge them, and then they get saved. Their 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 score gets saved, and then they go into contention to represent their school at the regionals. And then from the regionals, we go to the Palmerston North um, at the Clash of the Colleges, which is at the New Zealand Rural Games. And then each region, each regional winner then goes for the nationals. And then all of a sudden we're creating these like superheroes out of everything that you guys are passionate about. And then we're supporting NCA qualifications leading into level one, NZQA, level two, level three, hopefully level four next year, and then offering them the dip egg. And then we're filling the gumboots that need to be filled on farms because that's a huge issue for us. We're making farming sexy again and we're giving knowledge from you guys in a way that they can understand. And so that's why I reckon you should download that app because the reason I want everybody in here to have a crack at downloading the app, not because of what it is right now, but what it's going to be once you guys all occupy your spaces inside the module. So how it's broken down, it's broken down into four different categories. There's to jump into it, you register. This is, I'll just quickly give you a, a rundown on the power of it. Um, there's so many levels to it. So you jump in as a, if you're a worker, if you're a staff member, 
you can jump into it, put in all your details, where you're from, da 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 da, -da. It's, uh, it's going to have the functionalities to give you regionalised information based on your region where you are currently. So obviously down here, we've got a shitload of fodder beet on our farm, so you're going to have to watch all of the content. It's going to be, we've got these two characters in there. One's called Sally, um, which is seasonal automated learning, and Dave is daily automated video learning. And so all of those things get kicked in straight away. Um, if you are down here and you start, you, you sign up and you're on, on a farm, um, Dave will kick in and, and will drop you all of the fodder beat content, for example, because you'll be starting on the 1st of June. Cows will still be transitioning. It's a, a high-energy you know, high feed that can tip cows on their asses and cost the, the owner a, a shitload of money, right? And so if these kids were had KPIs for their contracts based on what they were getting dragged and dropped from Dave and Sally, then you're getting these kids that are like wanting to learn. They get a financial return from it. They get the knowledge that they need, as well as supported from NZQA. Um, then they're rocking out there. They know why it's important to transition cows on and off fodder beat. Might be different for up north. It might, might be all, all of the drought content. Um, how do you handle a drought? Or how do you handle facial eczema? Um, so it's all it's able to be regionalised, as well as catchment groups and all the rest of it. So, yep. How long you got? Five minutes. And so... You've also got the um, farm owner view. So the farm owner can sign up and he can sign his team up. So each one of his team can jump into it and he can select content from the modules, sections and videos inside the library and assign it to them. And then he can track it. So he can check whether or not they've watched it, how they went into the quiz. Um, and then that's obviously getting saved to them. He knows that they understand it. There might be mastitis or he might have just signed someone up around milk quality. Uh, we've got like a lameness course in there, like it's full of courses pretty much. And so we're just getting started, obviously. The app's only been running for a wee while. Uh, we're learning while we while we start, like while we track along. Um, there's yeah, it's 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 bloody exciting. It's cool to be seeing technology used in a way that um, can can give individuals, you know, recognition from being on it um, in a in a monetary monetary form. And then obviously transferring all of your guys' knowledge in a way that um, those kids can understand. So I'm getting a tap. Any questions? First of all, I'm a farmer, I'm a sheep and beef farmer. You guys are yelling at me like a bunch of peanuts. So. Thanks, mate. Appreciate that, eh? Hey? Because farming's cool, man. Like, it's fucking mean. Like, I love, I love farming every day. Like, love it. There's only two weeks in my life since I was, I've been brought up on a farm since I was about six. There's only two weeks that I've thought it was work, and it was when I was financially stressed and had a relationship breakup. And it, so it wasn't actually the farming; it was me. <laughs> so farming's cool. We just need to tell everyone about it. Yep, cool. So um, so I've got a commercial manager, um, and the reason that it's commercial is because we need to try and find the funding through government to fund all of these projects, as you guys well know. And it's there. This is a pedagogy. Like, this hasn't been done before, so we're learning as we go. But I've got the tool. We'll, we'll sort out the... If you've got the knowledge, I've got the tool and the people that want it, your knowledge... And so I just need to figure out how we can get it and what where it fits in, because there's heap there's there's so much out there to to gain uh, for our industry and there's so much funding available, but it's never been put in a place where it can be measured and delivered like this. If you guys understand what I mean, yeah. And so just just so just just to kick the the kick it in the guts, um, my happy place is farming. I'm always going to be working on my farm because I love it. And I need to be diving at least once a week. So I, I thought to myself, if I won lotto, what would I do? Oh, nothing. I'm really doing it. Like actual. That's exactly what I'm doing, what I love now. So questions? I know, mate. Yes.
mate, it's it's like unknown. It's uh, the unknown for them. They don't know. They don't know what's involved. They don't know the money. They don't know uh, the stepping stones to get ahead. Uh, there's never been. Uh, I see, you know, the likes of Alliance, and I, I see um, our processes marketing. Marketing, it's shit. Like all you see is some guy in an apron standing there like this. Like, that's not a story. That's a picture. You know what I mean? And so what, what needs to be done is there needs to be daily like content smashing out from real people. The Freezing Works has the most, the, the best characters I've ever met. You go, I mean, you guys all know, have you been to the Freezing Works? They're all a crack up. Like they, you know, they live, they're getting paid for the first time in six months on their first payday, you know? Like they, they, they love it there. Um, so those are where the story, people, kids want to, do, they want to do cool things. They want to follow the stories. So we've, we've built a whole lot of content already with um, Woodlands Butchers around c cattle processing. So right from slaughter all the way through to chopping up the whole, the whole cattle beast, the whole, the whole lot. And so we haven't done sheep yet. But what would be better is if we come, we could come in and smash out uh, the processing of a of a of a hogget, processing of a of a cow, um, in probably two weeks. That's how long it will take us to shoot it all. Then it will t be, it'd be a matter of us taking it away, chopping it all up, adding all the quizzes in, and then you've got a qualification that can be sent around the world to whoever wants to come to New Zealand and get get a job. They've already got the qualification. You can, you'll be able to pick the the low hanging fruit because they would have all passed and understood it all. So that they rock up here, not only with a knife, but an understanding of how to use it. You know, um, and and we so we can do that like right now. Yeah, those are these are the possibilities of this thing. It's a measuring of a YouTube style LinkedIn. So I'm going to be hanging around here. I'm going to get kicked off, but I want to hang around. And if you guys want to chat. I just want to be facilitate your guys' knowledge to get it and get it into making because I've got coals, mate. I've, we were supposed to send six coals today, and they've been pushed off. And I said, "Where were they going?" And he said, "To Matoda." And I was like, "What's the go?" And he goes, "They got bugger all staff." And this, we, the, we we just booked ours in for the season. Yeah, so it's tough. Anyway, lovely to be here. Uh, I'm gonna hang around, so if you guys wanna have a court at all, um, feel free to. Yeah, cool, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ta Thank you, Tang Ra. Um, like I say, you do stay around, because I'm sure there'll be questions out the back there, but we do have to move on. Um, you know, I, I understand your passion about farming, because I'm like you, I'm gonna carry on farming until, it's, until I can't. Um, we're gonna have to start the next session. Um,